This is a fascinating little device. Uh, it's a dual uh, charger for Canon LP E17 batteries, uh, which I got off of eBay just because I like the fact that it's got to two connectors. But uh, what I didn't think about when I got it is that it's actually USB powered. And as you can see, these are two cell lithium ion batteries, so uh, they're charging it way more than five volts. So this thing has to be quite clever. It has to have a little boost converter inside in order to work. And indeed, if you plug it in, it does a little cycle when it's powering on, uh, kind of uh, signifying that it's got a bit of brains to it. And if we put the battery in, I'm not sure if any of these are charged or even working, it takes a while to detect it. It can charge at a very high current. It's been drawing nine watts from the grid and it's making a little ticking noise. I've furthermore uh, measured it, and if we just get a meter in and measure the contacts, there isn't always a voltage on these two while it's charging. Or it will occasionally give a blip, but it's not constant. So I'm really curious about what the topology of this thing is going to be, because uh, it's just a weird thing. Uh, the ticking noise kind of uh, tells me that this has got like just a choke and a transistor inside, which is kind of dumping pulses of the current into the battery. But uh, the fact that it's able to draw nine watts from the grid kind of, uh, I don't know. It seems like a weird thing. So let's see what we've actually got. This actually looks rather high tech. Well, let's just pop out. It just pops out. Oh, wow. That's looking fancy. That's looking very fancy. Let's let's have a closer look at this. Well, this charger is absolutely fascinating, and I was uh, setting up a test to demonstrate it, and then it went up in smoke. Uh, but we can talk about it a bit nonetheless. So uh, there are a couple of reasons why this thing would go up in smoke. Uh, the first one is that this is a 16 volt cap, which is, was uh, continuously charging up to about 25 volts. And the second reason seems to be that it's rather overloading these tiny transistors because that's what's gone bust over there. Uh, anyway, what I had rigged up here was uh, this meter connected up to one of the outputs, this meter connected up to the other, and this one just for manual measurement. And what this charge is doing is it's uh, maintaining a boosted voltage here. Uh, the, this uh, entire circuit here, we've got uh, the USB coming in, going through a choke and a diode and a MOSFET on the negative side to this cap. So that's just a boost converter, run of a mill boost. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, the processor is uh, doing a 50-50 cycle where it's uh, uh, putting voltage to this side then it's putting voltage to that side and going back and forth and back and forth uh, as soon as it's detecting something drawing current there and it seems to be putting it a rather constant current uh, on these outputs uh, and it does have two big current sense resistors here uh, because uh, when you don't have any external power feed like ju I've got, just got a resistor here uh, uh, the voltage goes from uh, 0 volts to about 4 volts to 0 volts to 4 volts. Uh, so it's putting out about 500 milliamps constant current here. Uh, whereas uh, on this side, I've actually got uh, my lab power supply connected up, uh, set to about 7 volts. And uh, it just puts out the same 500 milliamps into the load uh, on this side as well. Uh, except it's uh, at a higher voltage, of course, due to the uh, power supply. Uh, and, and it just keeps cycling back and forth, and I think this thing it might actually be a pretty decent charger, save for the fact that it just went up in smoke. What a shame, I was really looking forward to demonstrating this thing, damn it! Ah, uh, maybe we can fix it, maybe I'll have to order another one. I I'm really intrigued, I, I love this thing. Alright, so if we just uh, trace this circuit out a bit by eye, we can really see uh, what's gone gone wrong and how it works. So, so, so here we've got a positive rail going in, and as you can see, it goes just straight, no decoupling cap, straight into this choke, 
choker is uh, on the other side connected to this MOSFET, which can connect that to ground. So when this MOSFET turns on, it pulls the current through this choke. When it lets go, the current wants to keep on going since it's an inductor, and it goes through this diode into this capacitor. So across here, we've got a boosted voltage uh, of about uh, 25 volts when it's just sitting around. And uh, right across this capacitor, we've got this trace going to this transistor, which has gone up in smoke and straight out onto the positive terminal. And if we look at the negative terminal to the battery, they're just connected straight to ground of USB through a very low value sensor resistor. What's that? 2.2 ohms. So it's a real, real basic circuit. Uh, boost converter and a couple of transistors to switch between batteries while charging all controlled probably in software in this very anonymous uh, microcontroller and you know we've got some decoupling and other stuff going through I'm not sure why they're really using so many of these uh, transistors all around uh, I would not expect to see uh, these guys really I don't quite see their purpose on, unless they're like driving these guys or something but uh, that's, that's beside the point uh, the issue here is that uh, these uh, transistors which seem to be labeled uh, Z309 uh, just couldn't handle the current going through them I was being rather harsh putting in a term a resistor right across these so this thing was probably overworking itself a bit uh, it obviously isn't very well protected against that bit of a shame hmm I wonder how it's really current regulating though because uh, really you could just uh, uh, connect that straight to the positive output and that would give you the boosted voltage but it's probably just monitoring each uh, battery half of the time it could even be implemented in such a way that it's pulsing this transistor in order to uh, current limit uh, it's an interesting circuit it's a really neat solution for problem though uh, although I think it's a bit solver for pulsing it back and forth even though you're just using one battery but uh, that could very well be to the fact that these transistors are undersized Yes, yeah, so that's about it for the time being. Thing went up in smoke during the first three minutes of use, but a really neat circuit nonetheless. I'm going to have to get another one of these. Ah, I can't resist to t tampering a bit more with this thing because uh, I've just removed the broken transistor now, and if we measure across the input, it's not shorted. I've got the meter and beep mode, and it's not beeping. So let's see if we've perhaps revived it by just uh, uh, taking out the short little thing there's a distinct possibility of more smoke coming out now here we go I seem to boot up normal is it gonna charge my cheaper battery well that's the right way around That's charging just fine. So it's just a question of those transistors being undersized. Now if we look at the still working channel, this thing actually seems to have really rather good voltage regulation. This is a pretty full battery and it's regulating to down well spot on 8.4 volts. So it has to be deriving the uh, voltage feedback from the actual uh, battery posts, which is Excellent, and it uh, kind of has a pretty decent reference as well. It has to be something built into this uh, processor because there's no external reference on the board. But if we can, they can achieve, ah, uh, they're, they're getting a bit higher. Don't want to get exactly 8.4 there, but yeah, well, that's pretty good. So I did a bit more uh, digging around, and these two transistors are just driving the big ones, which are switching the current into into the uh, batteries and you know what yeah that that ha 
that has to be what killed uh, the transistor because if we take uh, this meter away from here and put a normal probes on it and uh, actually measure the voltage across the big cap there, we will find that it is that's a negative, that's a positive, but it is very high. That's 25 volts there. So when you've got a low resistance across these terminals, like an empty battery, in my case, dummy load, when this transistor turns on, there's going to be a huge spike across it because it's basically emptying. Like if we, if we get to... Uh, 5 volts across there with the empty battery, we're just dumping the other 20 volts and they're going to be dissipated pretty much exclusively in that transistor. So that's what killed it. Now I wonder if there's a way to remedy that. Be hmm. I'm thinking this uh, regulator, this cap is getting warm by the way, I'm thinking this regulator just has a minimum GD cycle which it cannot go below. Uh, we can test for that quite easily, actually, by just uh, going into millivolts DC there, selecting duty cycle. So let's see what our duty cycle on the gate of this MOSFET is. In I I'm betting it's just not going to go down to zero. Oh, I was jumping around a bit, it seems to be pulsing, but uh, I'm thinking if we put a like 1k resistor across across that uh, capacitor, we're going to remedy the high voltage issue and this thing is going to be pretty good. Like so. Not the best looking job in the world. But I think this is going to remedy the super high voltage issue across that 16 volt cap. Let us find out. So we'll just measure across our cap again. Uh, yeah, that's looking better. It's still pulsing rather high when it's actually running, but at least now we've got some little tiny load on the regulator while it's running. Let's uh, min-max that and see what our peak voltage is. <laughs> it's still peaking at overrated voltage of a cap, but uh, that's a lot better than what we were seeing before when it was just sitting steady at 25 volts. Yeah, I would wager that solve the issue that caused the transistor to fail. Shame I can't really figure out what the what is supposed to actually be. Of course, the reason they actually have these two transistors is to prevent the batteries from getting uh, connected together when you've got two two in there. Yeah, so there you go. That's a really neat little circuit. Such such a shame they. Screw this resistor up because I haven't been able to like it. I don't think it's a manufacturing issue. There are no unpopulated resistors and none of the ones which are actually on the board seem to be across this cap and it just measured open uh, prior to my modification. And uh, I'm betting if this resistor would have been here from the factory it wouldn't have blown up on me. Real shame. I don't have any suitable replacement for that transistor lying around anyway but uh, yeah. I think I'm just going to keep this uh, where it is uh, for the time being because I just love uh, the cradle you get with it. It just It's just such a neat solution for charging batteries of this form factor and we can just shove them into the top and uh, have them poking out. It's so much better than the original Canon charger where you have to poke it in from the side and go click and then you have to fiddle with it quite a bit to get it out. This is a... Uh, Far superior solution, actually. So, way to go, China. Uh, just 
perfect resistor in there and you've got a really winning charger on your hands. This thing received my approval. I love it. <laughs> Not often I say that about cheap Chinese crap. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.